A 16 year old came to the office with something growing on the side of his face. He was hoping it'd be a quick fix, but instead it turned into over two years of treatment with multiple surgeries, including replacing a large segment of his jaw with his leg bone. Check out part one of this multi-video case today on The Open Reduction. Welcome to The Open Reduction, your channel covering all topics oral and maxillofacial surgery. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton, and today we're talking about a huge case, way too big to fit into one video. It all started when a 16-year-old male came into the office with a painless growth in his left lower jaw. He's otherwise healthy. He's a big kid, so this growth wasn't visible right away, but he's been feeling it for the last few months. On exam, I'm able to palpate an expansile mass in his left mandible. His teeth are immobile and he has no change in sensation. I obtained a comb beam CT and it's clear right away we have a big problem. There is an expansile mass causing bone resorption and tooth displacement. Here are some axial cuts of the lesion where we can see the expansion of the bone. Here's a recreation of the mandible, which clearly shows the size and severity of this lesion. Okay, so we have a 16 year old male with a large growth in his left mandible. So what do we do? First, we need to start thinking about what this growth could potentially be. This is called the differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis for a radiolucent expansile mass in the mandible includes an odontogenic keratocyst, ameloblastoma, central giant cell granuloma, myxoma, and a vascular malformation. The next step is to perform an incisional biopsy and figure out what we're dealing with. This first procedure is done in the office under IV sedation. I aspirated this lesion to confirm that it's not a vascular lesion. There was no blood on aspiration, so I opened it up, removed a portion of it, and sent it to the pathologist to get it underneath the microscope. The pathology report confirmed a diagnosis of ameloblastoma. So what is an ameloblastoma? Fortunately, they're rarely malignant, but they are aggressive and locally destructive. They can grow extremely large if untreated and cause severe facial deformities. Ameloblastomas arise from the cells that help develop teeth. They appear equally in males and females. Most occur in the posterior jaw. 80% of ameloblastomas occur in the mandible and 20% occur in the maxilla. They are expansile and locally aggressive lesions and they can cause mobility, resorption, and displacement of teeth. Ameloblastomas can be unilocular or multilocular on radiographic exam. Recurrence rate is up to 85% with the nucleation of these lesions, so this is not a reasonable option. The treatment is surgical resection with at least one centimeter margins. The cure rate for resection with appropriate margins is 98%. This patient will require a large resection of his jaw to definitively treat this lesion. Removing the ameloblastoma, that's the easier part, but what do we do once this tumor is removed? How do we reconstruct this teenager's face? This is going to require a team effort with a reconstructive microvascular surgeon on board. We're going to take living tissue from somewhere else in his body and use it to recreate the mandible. Check out my next video in this series, part two, which is going to go over the surgical workup and the actual procedure. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton. I'll catch you next time on The Open Reduction.